What are the trials and challenges God is putting us through is to turn us more into compassionate, loving, caring, strong people. Now, I'm not saying that Tamar's situation with Amnon was done as part of God's plan for Tamar. It's just disgusting. But what, I'm, what that is, is that a story of an extreme case where someone becomes so self-centered and narcissistic that they only think about themselves. And on faith being sick, requested his father, David, to send Tamar to come and take care of him, got her alone, and forced himself upon her. That's not love. That's abuse. That's violence. That is using her as a, turning her into an object rather than someone to be loved and cared for. And it matters how we think about the people around us. Especially even people who might disagree with us. We need to be compassionate towards them. And what's interesting is as soon as Amnon got what he wanted, he hated her. He hated her more than what he had wanted her before. With an intense hatred. And he kicked her out. You see, if, we, if we're not careful, we can slip into a kind of things where the wants just keep coming, and if that doesn't work, we want something else. Ever just wanted something for as a gift or a gadget, and you bought it, and you got it, and you go, oh, that's nice, and it goes and sits on the shelf. Were you ever given one of your children or grandchildren a gift? And they're really wanting it. They play with it for a few times and then it sits there and doesn't do anything. You guys know what I'm talking about. You see, the things that last are not the toys that we want. The things that last in this life are how we care for and treat each other. Amnon did not care about Tamar ever. He just wanted to use her for an experience. And once he had that experience, he wanted another experience. It's, the, it's an extreme case of narcissistic self-centeredness. And while I don't expect any of us to go to that extreme, the reality is once we start thinking about how can we use the people around us and objectify them, we're going down a nasty road that needs to be stopped. In complete contrast to being controlled by wants, if we are to be of love, this is what 1 John 4 says. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. And this is how God's love is shown amongst us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. And this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved, that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Real godly love is a sacrificial love that does hard things to care for others. So I'll have to run the next slide. Okay, at this point, Laura, I need you to push the space bar. So just go sit over there. Don't push again. Thank you very much. So the contrast between want or lust and love is fairly evident. Hit the first one, Laura. Just the space bar. Love is other centered. It does what God wants us to do, and we think about how can I please you? Laura, do you remember when we were trying to decide where to go for Valentine's? And you gave me a hint, and I wasn't smart enough, and I had to ask for it again. Yeah. So love is when I go where Laura wants to go, and none need to be told twice. We did get to the Dipper Watch Beach Club. Is that where we went? Dipper Watch Beach Club? Yeah. And what was it they had? The deep fried wontons? Go there, get the deep fried wontons. It's really cool. Because love puts what other people like first. She'd already gone with one of her canvas I had. It was really cool. Then in the next one, Laura? Self centered. Now, if I only went because I wanted the wontons and I didn't want to please Laura, that would be bad. Now, the good news is, I didn't know what the case was like. I believed her, but I didn't know. So I had to trust her. So I went, and she's right, and we should go back, I think. Okay? So love is self, is other centered, lust for one is self centered. Hit the next slide, or the next button. Love serves.
earns and gives. Um, true love wants to find out what pleases the other person. What are their interests? And it's not about myself. In the next one, because lust wants and gets what I want. That's why I said to Lou, you can show love for your mother by doing the dishes, or at least putting them in the dishwasher. Why? Because it's about thinking what will be helpful or caring to others. Now, there's lots of other things you can do, but that's an example. Lust, a love also, if you hit the next one, Laura, uses things and cares for people. Oh, I can use this to help you. Con one, in contrast, uses people for things or experiences. You have a sailboat. I want to be your friend. Please invite me to your sailboat. Hey, when are you going sailing next? Now, there's nothing wrong with going sailing with other people. The Mathers, you remember Mrs. Mather, guys, for your speech and growth? They did invite us sailing once. It was really cool. Now, if I only were friends with them because they have a cool sailboat, that would be using people for experiences. And that's not good. But if you have a sailboat and you want to invite people to come sail with you, because you care about them and want to encourage them, that is loving. Okay? Makes sense? Next one, Laura. <clears throat> Sacrifices for others. You know, real love does hard things. Jesus died on the cross. So, do we do the difficult things to help the other person feel loved? There are songs or movies made about sacrificial love. That person that didn't do what would have been the easy thing, but did the hard thing that was best. What's the story about the teacher, the basketball player? Oh, what's his name? I'm like, Coach Carter. Coach Carter didn't do the easy thing, he did the hard thing. Whether it's Remember the Titans, where he had to bring the two different uh, groups of students, black, black and white, who didn't really want to be together, he brought them together in Remember the Titans. Excellent stories about doing hard things. And they're celebrated. In contrast, once, I want pleasure, I want to eat. Now don't misunderstand. That doesn't mean you should never go on vacation. So for those of you who just got back from warm parts of the world, I might be jealous, but that's not where you shouldn't go. It does mean, though, that if all you do is go whatever is comfortable, you always take the easy way out. That's out of balance. And when you look at the two things of the whole love, Laura, Laura and Lyle, you got to keep you straight. Yeah, love is beautiful when people serve each other and care for each other. The the the, the Mother Teresa, the biography written by the journalist out of Britain, blank his name. It was something beautiful for God by Malcolm Muggins. That's it. In contrast. Wants are ugly. Oh, you're just using me. And so, I want you to understand, I didn't preach on this passage today just as my brother Doug or Dan asked, are you doing this just to say you did it? So, it did enter my mind for a second. What I really text this passage is, I want us to understand what we do here in worship and what we do about training ourselves to be people of love really, really makes a difference, not only in our lives, but in the lives of the people around us. Are we controlled by our wants and desires, or do we care for others, serving them, using things to please people, and doing it even if it costs us time, money, and energy? Because if we grow that kind of service, it makes a difference. And after I preached this sermon, uh, Chuck Barisich came up to me at care and said, make sure you tell them this at home. He says, stories like this in the Bible remind us that the scriptures are actually applicable. Because it's not like we're not dealing with this kind of nonsense today, right? Not to mention Harvey Weinstein by name, but... 
or that whole or, or many other situations. So in conclusion, it is vitally important that we nurture within us not to be self-centered, dishonest, pleasure-seeking people who look to ourselves. We need to come to worship to fill our hearts and minds with God and His ways. We need to read our Bibles and pray so that we're reshaped into people who think about God and how do we love the people around us, all of our neighbors, serving them, and sacrificially serving them sometimes as needed. Because if we do this, we can be used by God to do great things and to make our community and our world a little bit of a better place. Bit by bit, day by day. Let's pray. Our Lord and our God, we come to you not as people who have everything all figured out. We come to you as people seeking you and your guidance. As we've gathered here this morning, guide us and direct us into the ways you have us go so that we might grow as your people and that we might put off living lives centered around what I want and grow in you and your ways and sacrificially love and serve one another. We ask this in Jesus' strong name. Amen. Our next hymn is... What is our next hymn? Take time to be holy. Let's make this our prayer as we start.